Don't you think it's a little too early to be jumping to conclusions? Well, all I said is that those two would have been able to open door three with your brother. There might be other possibilities. Well, what other possibilities? Uh, um... Are you saying you think that it was three or four people? You really don't think that's likely. You can't rule out anything, that's just ruling from there. Why not? Can I borrow your pen and paper? Yeah, here. Okay, so look at this logic now and tell me what you think overall. Obviously, not in terms of the condemnation, but just like the thought process. What's this? These are the combinations for three or four people. These eight combinations are the only possible... Now, one ways. thing I have to commend her with is that this is already a lot of, like, oh, thinking that she's done. Junbei? Yeah? I... I can trust you, right? I don't think Clover thinks Junpei did it, though. I think I think that everyone thinks Clover doesn't think Junpei is is someone who did it, and I don't think she expects June either. She wasn't acting like it in the axe ending. She seemed to be willing to go with us. Yeah, and I say she would have went with June too if June to get her away. Mm. Of course. Why would you need to ask that? Really? Yeah. So then I should get rid of B, D, G, and H, right? Of course. Just cross them out. And you should take off yours too. The ones with four. So, what does that leave? A and E. Now what stands out to you about A and E? Okay, so we do know that one is Ace. Mm -hmm. Three, no, Snake is two, isn't he? Yeah. Santa's three. Santa's three. And June is six. Six, that's the top one. Yep. And then E would be Ace, Santa, No, wouldn't the top and one be Santa and... Oh yeah, but where's the one with Santa and seven though? Should not be on the list too? Oh, I don't know. No, that's, that's if there's two people. Oh yeah. This is three or four people. Oh yeah. So it would be, it'd be still so... Santa's involved in all of them. Just, Kind of funny. <laughs> and Ace is involved in those two. Mm -hmm. Well, one is a very helpful number. It, it just like ticks things up, just one. Seven is seven and eight is Lotus, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's if there was three or four people involved instead of just two. Well, at least she has one of them correct in there. <laughs> Wait, she does actually. It can't be A. Why? Because June's in that one. There's no way in hell she'd do something like that. Are you sure? I bet my life on it. Okay then. Would you I bet your life on it? A too, right? I don't know. I mean, June is also June is also a mystery to me. The only information we have on June is the stuff from her and Junpei's past. Correct. We have no information on June after, after their childhood. Mm -hmm. That At is all. completely true. Although she did. She did make that joke one time about like how many guys I've been with, like, uh, um, and she was like, she said a number and then said divide by zero, which means it's zero, or is it? Oh no, multiply by zero because divided by zero, I think you end up with one. So actually, it was by by zero, which is zero. Yeah, yeah. She was saying like, oh, I haven't been with any guys. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I believe that. <laughs> what have we got left? E. Do you know what this means? Everyone besides me, you, and June would be working together. Now, what do you think of that possibility? That's a very unlikely possibility. Mm. Do you think that's likely? Hmm. If there were four people working together, they wouldn't be very cautious. I don't think they'd try that hard to hide what they were doing if they outnumbered us, right? Well... What do you do think? You do you agree with her logic there? Kind of, in a way. But at the same time... How did she know it wasn't zero that did it? Like, do you know what I mean? She's she was the one who suggested that zero is one of us. Remember. And that's besides, true. if Ace and Seven are working, and if that's the case, who knows? Maybe they can open it without everyone else. That's another possibility. See, so she's root like. They could have easily got. Because I'm so, I would safely assume if I was in the situation, if I think one of us was the mastermind, there has to be a fail safe for them to get out. Because if I was a mastermind or something, I would want a fail safe to be able to get out. That is interesting, because there was one time where you brought up the, like, would Zero allow themselves to die in these games? Yeah. And... I think unlikely. No, I'm not ruling out the possibility, but I'm going to rule out unlikely. That's true, actually, because she went with Ace and um, Seven into the shower room. Mm. 
Wait, or did it? Yeah, because I'm thinking of a different end. Uh, different I can't remember who she went in with Sharon. But yeah, she went in t t with two of those. So if they were part of that group, they could have just dealt with her inside that room. Mm. So, like, she has thought this out. I know you're saying that there's some possibility she's left out. Yeah, there know, is possibilities. And we know the biggest possibility that she left what? out was reusing bracelets. And also the fact if one of them is zero, more than likely maybe they could open things without them knowing. Potentially. I do understand why she's doing all this though, because she wants an answer and she wants to blame somebody. And she's taught this out in quite a logical way. She has, in fairness, but she does want to, but she's still moving too fast with her conclusions because I think she knows they're on a time limit. time limit but she literally condemned people on just her own conclusions and circumstantial like, evidence circumstantial evidence which isn't how you should do things because we also know that in the axe ending she didn't actually get the real murderer no she ace murdered ran. innocent people yeah and ace ran off with lotus yep but they didn't they didn't even try anything if they were killers why wouldn't they oh I see anyway I understand now. It seems pretty unlikely that it was as many as three or four people. Yeah. Then that means there's a good chance it was Santa and Seven. That's how it looks. That's a good chance, not a definite. No, it's not a definite. They do it. Their motive. Have I interrupted something? Uh, you sure have, buddy. Uh, what is it? There was something I wanted to speak with you about, Junpei. Could you come with me for a moment? And this, I think, is where Go he ahead. checks our pockets. Okay. Now, the thing is, it's a similar conversation, but it is in a what different room. So I don't know if, like, the skip will actually work. No, it doesn't. There was something I wanted to... But it's fine. We can look yeah. at this again, because What's it's been that? a while. It's been if ages since this, actually. Me. Was it in our third hey, session what, that what we got to that doing? ending? I can't remember. I'm just checking. So that would have been, like, back in, like, September, October or something. Mm. I... Just as I thought. What exactly are these pieces of paper hiding in your pocket? <sighs> you switched them, didn't you, when we voted? Um... <sighs> well, I can't say that I care. I managed to get through the numbered door I wanted, despite your mischief. That's true, actually. He, he always wanted to get through door number then, one. Why did you... Oh, Which actually brings up an interesting question. I hope you won't think Ill of How did he know that he wanted to go through door number one? Because I'm assuming that this layout is probably the same as the layout of the previous Then game. he's like thinking back to it and he's like, oh, behind door number one is that place. And I want to get to that place. Probably. Because I'm going to assume uh... this is probably a replica of the first game. Mm -hmm. That would make sense. And the only person who couldn't see if it was a replica or not. Wait, wait. When you say replica, actually, do you not think it's the same ship then? Could be the same ship. Mm. Oh, maybe when you say replica, you mean the overall game is the replica, is it? And not so much the location. Yeah. Because it could be the real location. It could be the re could be the location, or they could have made the ship. I don't know then how much money do you need. Quite a bit. Um, so we got that done. Now there's two things to do here: red file and monitor. Okay. So remember oh, this this um, this book first. Remember. They stopped me, so this is Alice. new. Yeah, but do you remember this book? What's in this book, for one? Not really. What does this mean? Okay. What the hell is this? Now, do you recognize what kind of writing system that is? Isn't that like Egyptian? It's hieroglyphs, yes. Yeah. So, this is Egyptian writing, which notoriously difficult to read. Yeah, um, I don't know how. So... Who, back in the day, was like, this is how we write? Well, so here's the thing, actually. This is a logographic system. Do you know what I mean by a logographic system? Like, each logo represents a sentence or a few words? Mm -hmm. Or a concept. So, if you think about, like, Chinese writing, yeah. it's similar to that, in that you don't read it. These aren't, like, letters. These are, like, concepts. And you kind of have to learn off what each of these means, which can be very hard to translate. But the only reason people were able to translate these in the first place was because of the Rosetta Stone. The Rosetta Stone had three languages written on it, one of which was Greek. But the other one was Egyptian, like the hieroglyphs, and it was the same thing in each one. So they were able to use that as a basis. Like if this is the Greek writing of it, then this must mean that, and that must mean that. So they are hieroglyphs, a form of writing used in ancient. Actually, Egypt. most ancient writing systems were were logograms. I wonder when did Egypt stop using hieroglyphs? 
So Egypt, if you're talking about the history of Egypt, they went through a lot of different things. This, if I had to guess, Roman times would probably be when. That is fair. That's a fair guess. Uh, yeah. No, it's kind of sad it's lost because it'd be interesting, but like. Yeah. Um, I feel like it'd be a long time to write something. Potentially, yeah, because actually some of these are quite detailed, <laughs> these drawings as well, actually. Yeah. They're not like very simple things to write. I guess you need to some degree that like kind of applies to some like kanji or hanzi or whatever you yeah. want to refer to it as. I feel like this is slightly more complicated. Yeah. That's right. Like you have to draw an actual bird or something. It's kanji, a lot of it's still like lines and yeah. Can you read them? Of course. I can't. What would make you think? <laughs> I, I like that actually. What the hell? Whoa! The, I mean, the chances of like randomly that. finding someone who can read Egyptian hieroglyphs is so slim. I say so. <laughs> it's huh? such a specialized this... field. Oh, a, a key card. Oh. So it would seem. Bottom deck, library. Oh. This is important, Seven. actually. Even if I d this is similar to dialogue we've had before, but I think this still worth listening Alice to again. A small chamber past the forest of knowledge beneath the navel of the gigantic. Do you remember that? I was saying, like, remember that, and so do you actually remember him saying that now? Navel the bottom deck, and the forest of knowledge is the library. Then could Alice be in a room somewhere beyond the library? Did you know there's a, co a coffin in the bottom deck? Something on your mind? Sorry. Was there a co the coffin was in the bottom deck, wasn't it? It was, but it was in what looked... I don't know if they ever... <laughs> like, the car, like a cargo holder, they put like the big item people are carrying. I don't know if they ever specified what room that is. It looks like a chapel, like some yeah. kind of weird chapel. Um, yeah. I just remembered something. Is that so? What about? There's another coffin, though, the cargo hold. Oh, that cargo hold. Yes, in that one, though... Um, so the gun was. The gun was there, as well as a key. Mm. Um, but they were both, I think, in the bottom deck. So you think there's a, then another coffin? I don't know if there's another coffin, but I'm just thinking it's in the full coffin to the bottom deck. Well, don't laugh, okay? And I think it was chapel. The Egyptian priestess and Ice Nine. Because I'm guessing if there was an old ship transporting people back in the day, there would have been a chapel on board. Yeah, there probably would have been, yeah. Because people have been a lot more religious. Well, yeah, and they'd be like, we like, even though we're out here for months and months and months, we still need to like go to mass and stuff. Yeah, but I think people would have been a lot more religious back then and not want to miss mass. Well, it depends on which countries you're talking about in yeah. terms of religious. Yeah, I know, but like, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of like where cruise ships, like we talked before, had had works. Yeah. And the woman who don't want to be chapels on ships the now. Disaster. There must be, right? Maybe. They called her all I ice. do know the chapel. I know there is chapel, Alice. like little chapels in the hospital. Yes, there is. Although a lot of the hospitals in Ireland, I think, are kind of religiously oriented as well. No, I do know there's one in the CUH. Because I do my work for work in there. Where my mom used to work at, there's like this hospital in Cork. Um, it's actually, I think, the same hospital where I was born. Uh, Pre hospital. No, my. Mary Mount is where you go if you're, if you're pretty much dying. That's hospital. If, if your family member goes into Mary Mount, you know they're dying too. I can't re remember uh, the name of the hospital, you see. I remember it has like a... The front of it, there's like a little shop to the right. Yeah. As you it, wasn't the, it wasn't the ZUH, was it? No. It might have been, I'm not sure. But there is a shop in ZUH, that's the big one. That's the one I'm If you go in, the chapel is like beneath stairs. Like there's the two stairs leading no, off I the... Don't like I don't think it's the I think I know which one you is, but I can't remember. Is it the safest trail of Finbar or something like that? I think that's... Yeah, Finbar might be the place, actually, but... Um, Cause that's, and that one is in Cork City. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, and I, the bus I get goes out towards it. But that's like a very, like... I've always, like... Feel like there's like some religious symbols in the in the shop as well at the front. Yeah, I think it's because um, there's priests... When people die, they still give the last rites and stuff. And she was purchased by an English millionaire who called himself Lord Gordain. According to Seven, this ship is where he. So, do you remember house. Seven saying all that? Kind of vaguely. I do remember. It has been a while. I do remember her being a thing. Beyond the library on the bottom deck? Well, to be yeah. fair. Can well, I, I, mean, it is I, I can't skip this yet, no. Well, I wouldn't skip this, no, because for one, this is new dialogue, and secondly, like, I know they're Junior, just kind of going over... Have you ever heard of the term... Like, this is the, some really new information there. It stands for Cells Alive System. 
It is an advanced technology for so, freezing. Yeah, I was about to say before we go on. This is new. Yeah, this is new. But are you familiar with um, cryogenic freezing? Kind of. Like, I've heard of it, but I don't really know anything about it. So it's that belief where do you freeze your body? And oh, is that like they say that um, the founder of Disney is frozen underneath Disneyland? Something like that. Yeah, not quite to that extent. Well, Disney is frozen underneath the park. But it's like people. Um, Futurama, at the beginning of Futurama. Where Fry... Goes into the thing, yeah, that's yeah. meant to be cryogenics. Oh, okay. Oh, um, I'm actually up to date with that now, including the new, the new to natural that came out. Ah, uh, cool. But, point anyway is, there's a flaw with that system, and the Cells Alive system is meant to fix it, but I don't think it's actually possible or current technology. Um, but basically, I don't know how much they explain, you see, but I'll, I'll explain it. So, you know how we're mostly water? Yeah. Um, and you can think of each cell that we have as like, almost like a little bubble of water. Like it's got a little thing around it. Like think of it like a water ball, a bit. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens to water when it's frozen? It expands. Yes. Um, so what happens is when you freeze cells, organic matter, mm -hmm. The water expands and actually breaks the like the cell like layer around it, so it damages the cells. Mm. Um, which is why, for instance, if you freeze certain types of food, it can taste a bit different if it's frozen compared to if it's fresh. Yeah. Um, whereas cells alive system, I believe, is more to do with the idea of flash freezing. If you can freeze your your cells instantly. They don't get a chance to expand. You see, it's they expand as through the process of freezing, but if you're instantly frozen, then they, they don't, don't expand. expand. Just frozen, yeah. Yeah, um, but to actually do that is something that I don't think we've actually gotten to yet, because again, you need to freeze them instantly, and then not only that, if you freeze them instantly, you have to then unfreeze them instantly. Because if you're if you freeze them instantly and then start like just melting them, like it will damage the cells again. Because what I'll do is it'll contract, so your cells will actually shrink. And you know, again, just imagine like your body just falling apart essentially. Yeah, I don't know. So it's a complex little area, but, but why would anyone want to like do that kind of stuff and live forever? Like that makes no sense to me. It's like some people really want it. Actually, I don't think I'd want to live forever. Future Am is kind of accurate in that, in that, in that I think they flash freeze, don't they? Like, they, he's yeah. frozen instantly. And I think he was unfrozen instantly too. I think so, yeah. So that's the only way you could actually... Well, that's a theory. I guess no one's actually like, tested it out because they haven't been able to do that. Yeah, I don't know. If the theory know. is you could... That you know, we know of! There could be some crazy... Yeah, maybe, maybe they, there's some secret ones, but... Anyway, let's see if that's what he's talking about. Simply. It is a technique that allows one to freeze things without the formation of ice crystals. And ice crystals is what I was talking about with the... Normally, if you freeze something fresh, water within its cells expands... The membrane. That was what I was trying to membrane. think of. That annoyed me. Cass, however, works differently. The object to be frozen is super cooled using magnetic fields, and then frozen instantly and uniformly giving ice crystals no time to form. It was originally developed for the preservation of food. As is that an actual real thing? The normal though? freezing process. No. He's talking about it as if it's real. There are rumors that it can be used for other Maybe things. on smaller scale, like small things. What do you mean? Maybe. Things? Maybe like freezing, like... It, well, there he was saying foods, which would make sense to me. It like would it. make sense, and then... Because they're also not alive, so that means... Yes, but also if you want to preserve it, like if you if you were to somehow successfully flash freeze it and then flash unfreeze it, it would be as if it had never been frozen in the first place. So it would, be, it would still taste like as if it's completely fresh. fresh yeah. Well, there are obvious medical uses, but perhaps also space Ooh. travel. Space travel. Space travel. That's a good one because surely you've heard of suspended Sorry, animation. Cryogenic Why do you do that? Why do you keep going when I'm talking? Because I pressed one. You're just so hyper to do that. Yeah. What I was going to say was, like, you've never seen any of the alien films, right? No. But that's how they travel in that, actually. Like, they've, they're not walking about the ship as they travel from planet to planet. They're actually cryogenically frozen um, inside, like, these things. And they only get out of them once, like, the travel is done or if an emergency happens. That's kind of... I want to see space. 
Well, to be fair, you don't want to be a space in... Like, the tagline for the original Alien film is In space, no one can hear you scream. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but, um, but that's a good point there. And I'm trying to remember if there's any other examples of that in, like, sci-fi. There it surely is. I think I've come across that in something else as well. Of That they travel by being frozen. But that's the kind of go-to example I have. It's a fairly common idea in science fiction books and films. <laughs> I just brought up Alien. People are sometimes frozen for especially lengthy journeys through oh, space. Oh, Alien. Yeah, and what that's meant to do, you see, is it's meant to preserve... Like, because the idea is if you can't do faster than light travel... Oh, okay. It would take years, years to travel. To through, yeah. So the idea is, like, freeze them until they need to come out to preserve their age and stuff. What that does mean, though, is that when you're done, you're like space journey you might it's like everyone that you knew might Bye. be 50 years older or something or dead or dead yeah whoa 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 wait a minute there although one thing i do find also kind of amusing actually is there is a cat in the original alien film and it is actually also frozen as well so that cat is like outliving so many things are you saying that alice was frozen using that Thing? It well, is a fantastic sure film, but I don't. Quite low. It, it might be too scary for you. Yeah, no, I would watch it Yet this special ice you call Ice Nine does indeed exist, and casts were used to freeze her into that sort of ice instantaneously. You think she could be alive? Well, I can't say for sure, of course. I'm only talking about possibilities. Yeah, because the other thing is the she's. Melting point for okay. Ice Nine is 96 degrees, right? She's from ancient Egypt. Hmm. So, like. How would they flash freeze her in ancient yeah. Egypt? If she were put somewhere where she could reach that temperature... Aliens. Yeah. <laughs> Aliens in Egypt. That's how they did it. That, that, I was going to say that, but I was like, this game isn't going into the supernatural of aliens, really. <laughs> no, I'm just making a joke. Are you really saying she could have defrosted and started walking about? You're quite right. It does sound unbelievable. But if she had, then we would have an explanation for the man we found dead on the floor. You mean the guy dressed like a captain? Yes. He was dead when we found him. Clearly, he was murdered. But if he was murdered, then by whom? Mm. Actually, who did murder him? He was dead when they were dead. Unless Ace found him in there first and killed him. If that could, is a possibility, yeah. Did they all walk in the room at the same time, though? Uh, they seem to, yeah. Now, I will say that Ace was in the other room, remember, examining stuff. So the possibility of Ace finding him and then acting like he didn't find him. He'd have to have gotten through the door first with the watch, remember? Oh, then he couldn't then. Yeah. No, then. It couldn't have been one of us. That would be impossible. He got a point there. Do we get the answer of who killed him? I think we do. I think. I'm not as clear on him as the other fellow, but I think we do get an answer. In order to enter the captain's quarters, one must first open door one. That door that requires the earth key prevented us from accessing door one. Who was it that opened that door? Santa and Lotus. Right. Clearly, the two of them could not have opened door one, or any other door for that matter. Who else then could have done so? Nobody. After Santa and Lotus used the Earth Key, they turned back and met up with me in June. Yeah, because they couldn't go through door one. Mm -hmm. Then we returned to the large hospital room and found Ace, Seven, and Clover. While we'd gone into the shower room, Ace, Seven, and Clover had stayed behind. But it's impossible for those three to open door one. Hmm, but what about when June and I took the elevator to door two? No, still won't work. We were only gone five minutes. No human being could have run to the captain's quarters. Wait, some nice stuff in there. Is that Clover take the zero bracelet from here? She did, yes. Then she should know that she could take bright bracelets of dead people. Oh, but... Well, she took it. Does she know she can use it? Why did she take it? I guess she mu must have an idea that she can actually, because she chopped off our arm and took yes. our bracelet. So then she should also come to the conclusion. Like the ninth bracelet could be taken, which she obviously does come to that conclusion in the last ending we saw, because that's where she went and checked. Yes, that's true. Actually, she did go back and check it there to see. Which then would obviously automatically root in her head rule out seven of Santa. I guess she would go like, if the, if it's gone, then I can't think of those two guys as suspects anymore. 
Yeah. Well, I can keep them suspects, but like, I can't more say for sure. More possibilities. So, she still moved too fast if she had the theory in her head that you can use a bracelet. Then again, how logically could you think if one of your siblings was dead? She was logically enough to take the bracelet from here, I don't know. I guess. It's, it's a hard thing to determine. Hard, yeah. I think she just wanted someone to blame and she wanted the easiest solution. Yeah. Which would be to blame Seven and Santa. It would be impossible for any of us to be the murderer. That being the case, who could have killed him? Wouldn't it make sense if his killer was someone who had been in the ship for some time? Huh. A person like that would know the ship well. They would know the locations of all the hidden passages and secret doors. The numbered door would mean nothing to someone like that. It would be a simple thing for them to enter the captain's That's quarters. assuming there are, like, hidden doors and secret passageways. Then you're saying the killer was Alice? Well... This is all only one possible theory. All ice. Alice, is she really somewhere on the ship? Oh, wait. What? Never mind. What happened? I know who could have entered there. Oh, no, you need it. You need it. No, you only need it. Technically, Ace could have entered there on his own. The door, the door, door which was opened. Okay, so what you're saying when he went in to that he, other room? Because he, what, he's at number one. We know he's holding nine. That's ten. What the, that rune of that is one. But that's only two people. Oh, you need three. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> no problem. It was a good theory, but... Maybe this card will give me access to the forest of knowledge. Three to five. That's the number of people that can go through a door. And the big mystery. What could be there beyond the forest of knowledge? Uh, anyway, I remember now though. Actually, gonna have to wait. I can't do anything. Remember saying he could have. It was two. Yeah, I remember now who killed that guy. It it came back to me. It's been a while, but like it came back to me. Is it someone on the ship? Oh, no. I don't want to say too much. Uh, 